keep a, a pretty uh, short and quick ceremony, but I think it's a super important uh, event today. Um, we have a lot of partners here with us today in the room from city, state, uh, regional, and of course the federal government, which is the primary reason that we're here today. Uh, we all know that Nashville has uh, accomplished many great things, but has many great things left to accomplish, and we're certainly going to need our partners uh, at USDOT and the federal government at large to help us with those visions and dreams. This, uh, just adjacent to here, is going to be the site of our Antioch Transit Center, which is another one of our growing network of mobility hubs. <laughs> Not, not that Joy is the least bit partial toward this one. Uh, we won't ask anyone else to pick favorites, but Joy, you can have a favorite. Uh, and they are becoming a really crucial part of our transportation network here in Middle Tennessee uh, to improve connections and to otherwise improve service. Uh, I also want to wish, I think we should all wish happy birthday to Council Member Stiles. <laughs> Joy, I'm not sure whether you got dressed up for us or for your birthday, but, um, but we'll take it either way. Uh, now, before I introduce, so when, when Eric Melcher and we were going over the agenda, you know, did a little bit of educating. I said, no, the, the job is I get to introduce my boss, she gets to introduce her boss, and then he can introduce whoever he likes. But I do want to take a little bit of um, prerogative at this moment, because this is likely the last public event that we'll have with Mayor Cooper uh, as he transitions out. So while we're here specifically to talk about the Antioch Transit Center in this part of town, I did want to acknowledge, um, while by the way he might have been distracted by things like pandemics and, and Christmas Day bombings and tornadoes and the assorted other things that keep mayors busy, I just wanted to run down a brief list. I kind of had to stop in the interest of time of some of the accomplishments that his administration has had with respect to public transportation. Started really in, in December 2020 when um, Mayor Cooper's administration got council approval for the Metro National Transportation Plan. And that's been the bl blueprint that we've been following and I know folks like Diana at NDOT have been following since then. We got to uh, celebrate with him in very cold weather to open our first neighborhood transit center, the Hillsborough Transit Center down in the Gre Green Hills neighborhood. We have achieved full fa funding and last, uh, I guess last year, maybe earlier this year, did groundbreaking on the Ernest Rip Patton Jr. North Nashville Transit Center, which is well on its way to a spring completion for next year. We, uh, a key priority of his administration was improving the condition of our individual bus stops throughout the system. And we've been able to do physical improvements and shelters at 86 new stops during the course of his administration. To put that in perspective, that's an increase of over 40% in the number of sheltered bus stops in our system in just four years. Through, through the funding that Mayor Cooper spearheaded, we've been able to purchase 92 new small buses for our access system and our lower ridership routes. That is essentially replacing the entire fleet. We've also been able to accomplish funding and uh, acquire 82 new full-size buses uh, for our regular routes with 28 more on order that will also accommodate our spring service expansion next year. We've seen an increase in Metro's annual operating support for public transportation going from $48.6 million the year before he went came into office to $74.7 million with the most recent Metro budget, an increase of well over 50%. And maybe most important for the long term, uh, for his long term legacy and the long term health of our system, we experienced significant inclusion of WeGo and other multimodal uh, partners in the development of plans like East Bank and the Global Mall redevelopment. So I think the East Bank has the opportunity of being the first new neighborhood in Nashville develop, developed with a transit and multimodal focus, focus probably since the trolley suburbs of the 1880s and 1890s. So as a result of all of this and with our October service changes, WeGo Public Transit will be operating more service than ever before. And we have been among the very best performers nationally in the return of, pan of ridership to pre-pandemic levels. In fact, I expect with this quarter's ridership, we will surpass our pre-pandemic levels. 
And this location is a great example of that. It will be an anchor for our number 55 Murfreesboro Pike service, which is now carrying on many weekdays over 5,000 riders per weekday and is up at well over 130% of pre-pandemic levels. So with all of that to sort of lay a backdrop, um, I'm very proud to introduce another partner, certainly a very close partner of mine, the board chair of the Metropolitan Transit Authority of Nashville and Davidson County, Gail Carr Williams. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here. So um, I think, Steve, thanks for the kind introduction. And you know I'm not really your boss, but you know, I get bossy sometimes. Like, this is like my third kind of celebration of a transit center in my tenure at MTA we go. And look, it don't get old. It's amazing. And it's amazing to be in so many of our Nashville communities to bring this kind of transit to our citizens. So grateful to be here today and I'm not here and our work is not done without an incredible board. Jessica Doppin, who is our chair of finance, is here with us today and Jessica is such an advocate for transit and does an incredible job throughout our city to make certain that transit is available and people have the knowledge about transit that they need to make good decisions and also to have increased riders so thank you, Jessica, for all you do. And I will also say while my other board members are not here today that I don't see them, but they are fabulous, they're amazing, and they're very thoughtful, and they're very committed to Nashville and growing transit and enhancing transit in Nashville. So to our other board members, thank you very much for all the work that you do. So it's pretty exciting. This location is our busiest route, 55. I just saw one of our articulated buses outside and looked like it was ready to go and full and picking up more passengers. And it is operating at 128% of pre-pandemic ridership levels. To be able to have this kind of transit, I also have to say a, a thank you to our council members, and many of you are here today. Thank you for always supporting transit over the years and allowing MTA We Go to grow and be able to serve our community in meaningful ways. You always stand with us, you stand for us, and you stand for the citizens of Nashville. And as a board member, I'm truly grateful that you allow our job to be that much easier. So thank you very much. Um, the importance of better serving Antioch and other neighborhoods outside of downtown, it, it, it just gives us an opportunity for our citizens to get to and from where they need to be, whether or not it's work, whether or not it's a doctor's appointment, shopping, or maybe to come to Nashville State Community College with the leadership of Dr. Jackson. What about that, right? Like, she's out here and she's growing Nashville State, and I couldn't be more proud as a citizen of Nashville to watch the growth of her leadership. It's phenomenal. And we thought over on uh, White Bridge Road we were doing a big thing, but look at it, look at you now. This is really phenomenal. And it allows, our transit is allowing access to education. And having access to education is indeed an opportunity for our city to be the best that it can be and also allow our city to achieve the excellence that it deserves and that it works so diligently for. So thank you, Dr. Jackson, and thank you, MTA staff, for your vision to make certain we had transit to be in this series and to partner so diligently with so many. So thank you very much. So again, I mentioned this is the third one. So Hillsborough Transit, it really was cold that day, but those Hillsborough High School students uh, sang and they came and they supported us and they shared information about quick tickets to everybody that was there. It was amazing. And then we did the groundbreaking for the Dr. Rip Patton North Nashville Transit Center. The steel's up, y'all. You gotta go by and just drive by and see how it's growing. Art's coming into it. Uh, our local artists, are partnering with us for that. So again, it's the inclusiveness that transit brings to our communities. And here we are here. I just can't wait. Uh, so it's an exciting time. So another reason we're able to do the things we do, and you know, of course, clearly I'm not Steve's boss because he took a lot of my words about Mayor Cooper, right? So <laughs> who's the boss, Steve? But Mayor Cooper has been an incredible mayor for transit. 
couldn't be more grateful. He has made certain that transit is in the forefront of the minds of all Nashvilleans and has given us the tools necessary for us to grow transit, for Nashvilleans to appreciate transit, and to stand as a, as a champion for transit, not only transit, but the future of transit. Because if we don't talk about it in now and in the future, then we, we, we just don't move. We don't, we don't, we go. But at the end of the day, Mayor Cooper, you have been an extraordinary partner for transit and Nashville is grateful for all of your leadership. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will turn this podium over to you. So thank you very much. Oh, and if I could just say one more thing. Happy birthday, Council Lady Scott. Right. I think we all have to say that today. Um, well, thank you, Gail. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's my privilege to be here and thank a whole lot of people. And Dr. Taylor, any, you want to come back with another check? We will reassemble. <laughs> Very good that you are here to see where your investment is going. Thank you for being here today. But um, this, I mean, um, we, Rome isn't built in a day, but I think, Steve, we're getting to be kind of a month into it because we are beginning to connect these big visions on transit and housing and community and neighborhood. And over on the side, you've got one of the great visions for Nashville going forward, and I want to thank Dr. Jackson for her powerful role being in the center of it to connect education and sports and joy culture and arts and housing in a park focused transit focused neighborhood vision which hopefully will have a lot of affordable housing in it as well and joy you got four years of work ahead to get to this and steve thank you um, and to our state partners, thank you, Senator Oliver and Representative Clemens um, for being here. Our DOT Commissioner, Butch Ely, also thank you for being here. So you, so you can see where some of your money is going. And our, um, Mike, our great council partners in getting this vision accomplished. So thank you, Council Lady Allen and Porterfield, and to our Vice Mayor here because this is a big vision for Nashville. I mean, we, we had the nerve last year to take the big first step, which is to buy this site, determined to return it back to the community, not let a dead mall sit here for another generation and weigh down this community, but instead to partner with the community in a vision that you see over here. And this today is the, one of the first concrete steps of going forward, thank you for USDOT money, to contribute to that, to create a life for Antioch and Southeast Nashville that is gonna be the highest quality life in Nashville because you're bringing it all to the table. Transportation, <laughs> culture, place for our creatives to live, green space for our families, the ability to have a connected community that's invested in. And I love the balance of the site, of education, culture, sports, parks, ultimately housing. But it's the teamwork that's gonna make that happen. That's the state and the federal government. We're gonna need your help to do that. Um, I'm grateful that we, you can't, <clears throat> unless you're making plans, then nothing is gonna happen. So first, make great plans. And I think today we're making this first step into creating the renaissance, both on this site, but in this part of Nashville, which has already happened. And in making great plans, I think Berkeley and Delicia and Vice Mayor Henderson would agree, this illusion, I mean, we know what to do, which is housing on transit corridors, but you have to do a transit corridor. <laughs> and you have to do housing. And both are tackling a skill set that local government has not always had, is you have to innovate to achieve and to go forward. The ability in this year to have 5,000 affordable units coming in the pipeline was thought to be an unachievable goal just a few years ago. Now I think that's our expectation, the goal of having 50,000 units in 50 years. A few years ago, people said, well, that's just made up. But in reality, that's being accomplished. And Steve, as you 
create transit corridors in Nashville, starting with basic investment. I mean, to go from very little to a system, to networks, to a hubs, to, to stations, is uh, again, it's it's not it's no more than a month into it, but it's a great month as Rome is kind of building itself, and we are going to be, Dr. Taylor, um, really this incredible city going forward. Um, I don't know of any city that has the opportunity for so much success, which has to reach all of our people, and that is achievable by investment in infrastructure. And thank you for your help. Only with the infrastructure can you create the livable city that um, we, we, our children and grandchildren, are going to be thanking us for because we took steps like the one that we are taking here today. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. I think I'm supposed to introduce our celebrity from the celebrity with the, the pretty big checks. We could use another check. Okay. I, I hear you loud and clear, man. Well, good morning, and, and thank you so very much, Mayor Cooper. And I just want to pause and say thank you for your leadership. It is truly being admired in the words that we've heard. Thank you for your vision. You're right. Start today for what you want in the future. So thank you again for your leadership. Good morning to all of you. It is a pleasure to be here in the city of Nashville coming with money, right? <laughs> coming with money. Uh, and just celebrating with you all today. We, we had a wonderful day yesterday with Steve Bland and Billy and some of the other folks and, and went out to see the vision, all the projects that's in the pipeline and could not be more exciting to see and support and be a partner with MTA as we go forward. So I want to thank you all. I want to thank uh, the WeGo Transit Board Chair, Carl Williams, for all of your support and leadership. And this panel here is amazing. This is what it takes to get things done. And so it is an honor to be here on the panel with you and certainly my dear colleague, Mr. Steve Bland, that we've worked together for many, many years and I so much appreciate his partnership and his success here in Nashville. So on behalf of our FTA Administrator, Nuria Fernandez, I am pleased to help celebrate We Go Transit's recent federal grant for $5 million to help support the new Antioch Transit Center here in Southeast Nashville. This project will make it safer and easier for people to catch the bus with well-marked bus bays and air-conditioned waiting rooms. We are so pleased that the new transit center is part of a redevelopment project that will bring new opportunities to this part of the city. We know that the new Antioch, yes, yep, and there's some of the renderings over there, and we know that this new Antioch center will add a mobility component that will expand across to and across the area for people all over, depending, not depending on income levels or abilities, but it will provide access for all people. And we look forward to that. We look forward to the economic development that will be brought into this corridor. More than 60,000 buses travel the streets of America, from cities like Nashville to the smallest towns all over our nation. Here in Southeast Nashville, people make thousands of bus trips every day. We heard the numbers yesterday from Mr. Bland. The, the ridership is almost back to the pre-COVID numbers. And we know that it is important for those folks to get to work, to get to school, to visit their doctors, and to see friends and family. Buses provide the glide path to opportunity, to what people need to make their lives better. So this project we are celebrating today is one of 130 federally supported projects in 46 states and territories this year. These grants will fund more than 1,700 buses that will be built by American workers and will create or repair transit facilities across the country by American labor. So this announcement, thank you. <laughs> So this announcement is the second set of bus grants paid for by President Biden's infrastructure law. In the past two years alone, we have made more than $3.3 billion of investment in American buses and facilities to bring safer, newer, faster, and cleaner rides across the country. Thanks to the past two years of funding, these new buses and new facilities, like the new Antioch Transit Center, 
will help address climate change. Many of them will help us achieve a zero emission future by 2050. So I am glad to be here to announce this important step for Southeast Nashville as we go prepares for a better transit future for all. Creating jobs, modernizing our nation's infrastructure is all part of President Biden's infrastructure and investing in America agenda. For too long, transit agencies have had to make tough choices with limited budgets that resulted in deferred maintenance and replacement of buses and rehabilitating or building new facilities. Since taking office, the Biden-Harris administration has made a commitment to modernizing transit systems, promoting equity, connecting communities, and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So when President Biden signed the bipartisan infrastructure law in 2021, it created for the first time an unprecedented opportunity for us to improve people's lives. So the legislation boosted the support of buses, bus facilities, low and no emission programs by more than 500%. This is incredible. And so this is actually a, a tremendous down payment on our nation's transit and clean energy future. But these are not just numbers. They are real actions that are changing our communities. So thanks to the project we are supporting here with WeGo, we are creating new opportunities to improve people's lives. We are so proud of all that you do, Mr. Bland and your team, and again, congratulations on a well-deserved check that we'll be presenting today. So it is now my honor and privilege to introduce to you the TDOT Commissioner, Butch Ely. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Uh, wow, what a great day to be here um, and to be at this this facility. Um, it's it's such a such an honor to be here. Um, and I, I'll tell you my as I think about all the words that I've heard so far, and we still got uh, words to come. I, I think uh, my main message, and actually what I hear the main message here today, is you know. This is the way, this is the way it should work. Working together, when our government works together with our federal partners, our local partners, and our state, um, this, this is what happens. And so this, uh, what, what we're doing here and celebrating today is, I think, uh, and, and uh, a wonderful accomplishment of demonstrating just what working together means. And so. Uh, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to uh, to, to be part of that. Um, you know, I, I, when I, Dr. T Taylor, I, we we enjoy seeing you all the time, but <laughs> but when you come and bring a check, we really love seeing that. And so so thank you for that. Uh, I also want to say a word uh, uh, about our mayor. Um, and I think it says something as I came in here how how enthusiastic you were, Mayor, to take me aside and and show me this campus and show me the the uh, improvements that are being made. And so, thank you for your 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 leadership and commitment to transit uh, over the last few years while you've been uh, been mayor. Um, you know, transportation to me is one of those. Uh, activities that we do in government that virtually every single person benefits from every day. Every single person uh, needs access, as we've seen here, access to health care, access to education. Every single person needs connectivity, uh, connectivity to your neighborhoods, connect Activity to community, and this this corridor, this area that we are in. So, this this ages me a bit, but um, this place was built in 1978, which happened to be the year I graduated from high school, and um, so it's been a while, and we've seen we've seen a number of changes, and today is a tremendous positive change for this community for the future. This Murfreesboro Road corridor, this I-24 corridor, is one of the busiest in the, in, in the state. 
and uh, we've we've gone from thousands of cars today to hundreds of thousands of cars a day right here on this corridor and being able to move people to where they need to be you know a lot of a lot of our stations it was it was great to be part of our uh, opening in north nashville um and you know a lot of our stations are helping to get uh, people uh, out to other places one of the things i love about this is one of this this is going to be a this is a destination unto itself i mean so we're 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 not only getting people from here where they want to go we're also getting people all over the county uh to hear this location uh to be able to celebrate the things that they want to do and so um i, I certainly um also I, I also want to commend my my partner um you know there's two things we, we talk about these uh these sessions being a collaboration and indeed it's a collaboration but a, a collaboration is when you come together and talk a partnerships when you come together and do something like spending dollars to get something done and so that's what we have here the state is honored uh i don't i don't have a check uh with with me today uh but the state was honored actually to be able to participate early on with our multimodal division which does a great job uh for tennessee and for this area to to invest in this kind of investment for transit so uh, the state put five million um uh, state dollars, uh, thanks to Senator Oliver and Representative Clemens. Uh, uh, we put an additional um, 3.2 million dollars from other from other funds that we received from the federal government that uh, that we put specifically to this project. So the state um, has invested 8.2 all in uh, along with. Uh, this commitment and help to go after these dollars uh, with the federal government and so um, it's great to be here it's great to participate in this and uh, I now want to turn it over to the birthday girl <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. So good morning, and yes, it is my 50th birthday today. Birthday. I'm very excited. Um, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Ely. I do want to let you know, I'd love to chat with you before I leave about Bell Road. Yay! So I just want to take this moment in to look out at everyone here who is supporting this vision. This was a journey. I'm grateful that we were able to get this done uh, in the last four years uh, and to know that we crossed the finish line, we eked this right before we finished. Mayor Cooper, thank you because before the city built this plan, the community was already talking about what we wanted and what we needed to have out here. What were our needs? And you listened. And then colleagues, Councilmember Allen, Councilmember Porterfield, and now Vice Mayor Henderson. Thank you all so much for voting for the $44 million investment that it took for us to stand here today. Newly elected Councilmember Deontay Harrell, thank you for joining us today, representing the new District 8. Thankful to have you here, and I know you're going to be on board for all Southeast improvements. <laughs> I want to thank <laughs> State Representative, I'm sorry guys, I'm so shy. Um, <laughs> State Representative John Ray Clemens, Senator Charlene Oliver, of course, Commissioner Ely, Dr. Taylor, <laughs> and Jorchek. Thank you. We are grateful to have you. Chair Williams, Steve. We spent so much quality time together and we've got so many more miles to go. Um, <laughs> and Dr. Jackson, all of you, thank you for being here today. You all have believed in Antioch. You believed that 
the past that was so vibrant that everyone worked here and played here for all those decades could come back. I always saw when I moved here what Antioch was designed to be. Not what other people have designed to call it now, but who we were supposed to be and frankly, who we are and the greatness that you're about to see from us. This community is filled with vibrant individuals. We are the most diverse part of the city and I'm excited every day that I get to meet a new neighbor who's Egyptian, who is Latino, who is black, who is Caucasian, Bhutanese as well. We're all here and we are all looking for that place to have community. We have that moment now. The master plan, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, it's beautiful. It is three years of community input, community meetings, working with planning. Thank you, Anita, who is here from the planning department today. We had steering committee meetings, yes, please. We've had steering committee meetings out the wazoo, working with Stantec to design this concept that gives us the opportunity to live, work, and play in Antioch. No longer are we going to be forced to drive 20 to 30 minutes outside of our community to shop or to eat. The investment is being made, and I am really proud of this plan. The Antioch Performing Arts Center, yes, I'm biased as a creative. Um, <laughs> the artist housing, we're hoping to have 400 units of artist housing so we can be an art and innovation district, so we can have life sciences here on the site. This is the place where creatives can come to get their footing. And as they become more successful, they can start to move downtown. But we will have arts here 24 seven for our kids and for our adults. And it's going to be multicultural, and I love that. And I love that Nashville's making the investment in us. To have this funding, Dr. Taylor, for this regional transit center to be the first thing that's going to be moving on the site for us changes the game. So many conversations have been had about why should we take the bus? Why should we invest in transit? We're a city that clearly has relied upon cars. But the reality is, is if you can show people how great transportation can be, they'll stop driving their cars. I moved here from the East Coast, accustomed to having bus option, train option, or a car, a light rail. So I know it's possible. I know what we can do here. I know that having the most ridership out here means that when this transit center opens, it's going to be booming 24-7 because I know we're getting to 24-7 service. <laughs> I'm putting that in the atmosphere, everyone. And of course, I'm saying it again, Steve, because I'm, I'm desperate in wanting it, an express bus with two stops from Antioch to downtown. <laughs> that way we can convince people, don't drive. It's gonna take you 15, 20 minutes to get downtown, don't get in your car and arrive at work stressed out. Relax, read a book, listen to a podcast, knit, do whatever makes you happy. But you can do it on a bus. That changes your life. That's less gas, that's more money in your pocket, right? It's better for the environment, we'll go there too. Councilman Rallon. This is an exciting ground zero and you all are here to witness this moment. This changes our lives. And I am a huge proponent for transit. Jessica, I love your work. I love what you do. Um, your belief in fighting for transit, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I personally am committed, and I've also said this to Steve, I wanna fully fund WeGo in the budget, fully, fully. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mayor Cooper, for everything that you did because we have to crawl before we walk, but it's time for us to walk. So it's time for us to fully fund WeGo so that the people that are taking the bus can have the service that they need, the frequency that they need, and we can convince them to stop driving their cars because the truth is, most drivers here are horrible. <laughs> and we 
we should all be off the road for our own safety. <laughs> So, um, I, I, I hope that I have not left anyone out in terms of, of thanking, um, charge it to my head and definitely not my heart. I'm grateful for every single person that's sitting in this room right now. Antioch is on the rise. This transit center, when my constituents see the ground break, it's going to fill them with so much pride and excitement because there's been this belief that the city doesn't believe in Antioch, and that's a lie. It's a lie because we've, we've made millions of dollars in investment, and more are coming. Because the city does recognize we are a thriving community. We are, we are a part of the city. We are a part of the fabric of this city. I'm grateful to all of you for coming. Thank you all here for making it happen. And at this time, I would like to introduce an amazing human being who runs Nashville State and has a big heart and a passion for educating individuals. And having you out here is a blessing because we have one of the best culinary programs. And it's out here in the Southeast. It's not in West Nashville. So, <laughs> and we are planning on collaborating with that program for a community kitchen. So, I am inviting all of you as we carry on with Tanger opening October 27th as we move forward with the transit center, uh, getting ready to be built. There is so much happening in Antioch, you want to be a part of it, so mark your calendars for the comeback. And so, without further ado, Dr. Shana Jackson of Nashville State, can we give her a round of applause? Thank you, Councilwoman Stiles, and happy birthday oh, to you. you. Shall I sing for you? Yes. No, no, yes. I'll wait. I'll, I'll, next time, next time. Uh, good morning. Uh, Nashville State is excited to share in this announcement and thankful to FTA and Dr. Taylor, the state, the city, Mayor Cooper, the visionary, and Steve for all the investment that's being made today. While we have been serving students at our Southeast campus since 2012, I believe we are just getting started. Nashville State is on the move. As you just said, Antioch is on the move. And we go in the Antioch Transit Center is critical to helping the college achieve its bold vision to be a national leader in student success and workforce development. How? Because transportation is a significant barrier to students being able to access education and, as important, stay on track to complete college. As we are already in partnership with WeGo through our College Foundation to provide bus passes to students, we hear from students each and every semester the challenges that they have working their school and work schedules around transit. Creating a center at this location is an important step in the right direction. This fall, thanks to the leadership of our campus director, Jamika Hines, who's with us today, we are serving over a thousand students at our Southeast campus. But guess what? We know there are thousands more that would come if they had reliable, affordable transportation. And as our enrollment grows, so will our support for students, programs, and the workforce. Nashville State has over 40,000 square feet of undeveloped space on the second floor of our campus. That will allow us to bring new programs in healthcare, IT, and other fields to meet the existing and emerging needs of our area employers and our shared community. We are indeed Nashville's community college, but I want to tell you beyond professional, I have a personal commitment to this area because Antioch is the first place I lived in when I moved to Tennessee almost 30 years ago. 
and it was a vibrant city, and it is becoming everything that we want it to be, and this is an important first step. So I believe that the Antioch Transit Center will increase access to education and training that this community needs to increase economic and social mobility for all. It is now my honor to ask someone else who cares very deeply about this community and certainly has been a strong supporter of Nashville State, Representative John Ray Clements. Thank you, Dr. Jackson, and thank you for your tremendous leadership. And I was joking earlier, you know, your, your West Nashville school was growing and by leaps and bounds, and now my district lines get redrawn to the southeast, and now this branch starts growing, so I think the growth is, is following me, and I, and I love that. I'll take all the credit I can get for that one. Um, first of all, but I want to take a point of privilege, and, you know, and, and I know a lot has been said, and I don't want to repeat ourselves, but... You know, I, I just want to thank Mayor Cooper for his tremendous leadership as he wraps up his tenure here in Nashville. But to add something to that is all of us leaders know that we can't do anything without a staff. And so I just want to thank the entire administration, the Cooper administration, his entire personal staff, his security detail, to his department heads, everybody across Nashville. Thank you for everything you've done over the last four years. It makes a tremendous impact uh, and compliments. It really complements the efforts and, and leadership that's provided by the council and the mayor's, mayor themselves. So thank you for that. Well, if you've spent any time with my good friend, council member Joy Stiles, you know that this is the center of the universe. <laughs> this is not only the crown jewel of Southeast, this is the crown jewel of Nashville, Tennessee. And that is the result of visionary, courageous leadership. And, and a lot of that is in the room today. And a lot of that is just from your community members who volunteer, who provide great insight and community feedback to guide leaders like council member Stiles and myself and Mayor Cooper and others here about what they need and what they want. And, you know, mobility at the very core of mobility is all about equity and opportunity. You know, and, and you've heard a lot today from the speakers about the type of equity that, that, is, that is insured by ensuring access to transportation and the opportunities, whether it's the opportunity to play hockey like I do over at the Ford Ice Center, or the opportunity to, to come learn at one of the, the leading uh, educational institutions in our state, or the opportunity to come shop and, and just enjoy um, you know, an elevated quality of life. I appreciate all the vision, all the leadership, and, and, and also I'd like to reemphasize what Commissioner Ely touched on and, and others is, you know, this is about teamwork. Um, and this is really a true example of how people, I mean, we may have different perspectives, we may have different viewpoints and different ways of approaching things, but at the, at the end of the day, if we could all work together to improve people's quality of life and ensure some equity and create opportunity for the people we represent, everyone wins. And so thank you, Commissioner Ely, for, for your leadership at the state. You know, I don't vote for many of this governor's budgets, but um, I, 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 I voted for the one that put a lot of money into infrastructure because I trust Commissioner Ely and I trust my colleagues who, who made infrastructure a priority. And so I just want to thank everyone for everything you've done to make this happen. This is a years long process. This is um, a process that started at the very highest levels of government. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank President Joe Biden for the leadership that he, that he provided um, to generate the funds and pass the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act that actually makes projects like this possible. And, and, 
and you know, and you know, Doctor, we we certainly appreciate because it's, it, those of us who've worked in D.C. or lived elsewhere, you know how you can get and get in stuck in that Beltway bubble. But this administration, this Biden administration, really understands that it's about investing in local communities and improving people's quality of life, and that's why this check is symbolic of that commitment and that awareness. And we can't be more appreciative of you recognizing that this is the crown jewel of Nashville, Tennessee, and this is the heart of Tennessee, and that this is where those types of dollars should go to improve people's quality of life, because it is only going to get better from here, and we can't thank you enough, each and every one of you who does so much for our community. You are to be applauded. You know, I've also been traveled across the state of Tennessee and spoke to groups over the, my tenure in the state house and, and lamented the fact that once upon a time, we had leaders at the federal and state level who did courageous things and built great things, whether it was an inter intercontinental railroad or an interstate system or hydroelectric dams. And I feel like we got away from that at some point, um, you know, in, in the recent past. But now we're coming back to that, thanks to great leaders at every level of government. So from the council members all the way up to the federal administration and, and Steve and all of you who have made this possible. I want to see more to come. I challenge us to do more, to invest more, to build more. Together we can continue to improve people's quality of life. Thank you very much. And it's now my honor to introduce my good friend, Senator Charlene Oliver. Wow. Good morning, good morning. Uh, it's not often I go last, uh, so everyone took all my talking points, <laughs> but that's okay. You know, um, I used to be a resident of Antioch when I, uh, after I graduated college, so this was the first community that I moved to, and um, it has changed quite a bit. And I remember, I'm not, you know, that young, but I've I'm, I'm been here long enough to remember when people used to disencourage people to move here because of the crime. And, oh, don't move to Antioch because your car will get broken into and it's not a place you want to be. Um, but that has since changed. And that has been changed because of the people on this panel as well as in this room. And so I am just happy to say that it is now, you know, Southeast Davidson, one of the most attractive places to live. And again, that is thanks to people in this room. Absolutely. Um, you know, transit and transportation is probably one of the few issues that remain that we all can agree on and get some things passed. So this is actually uh, federalism at work, right, where our state, local, and federal government can actually um, make some investments in an issue that we can all feel and touch and see a difference in our lives. And because of traffic is one of the toughest challenges um, that we face in this community, um, I'm thankful to the people in this room who are really making an investment into tackling one of the most difficult challenges we face and with a solution that actually gets people off of the road and out of their cars. Um, so thankfully, uh, mobility and uh, thanks to mobility and also the transit center, this will be a hub for encouraging residents not only to ride the bus, but also to carpool, to ride share, to bike to work. So this is really truly not, not only tackling a, a mobility issue, but also an economic issue um, for this region. And I, when I mean region, I mean also Rutherford County, who the people that are commuting to work as well. So uh, we're also tackling a public safety issue with this Antioch Transit Center. This climate control center will also allow people to wait on the bus and, uh, and get out of the elements, right? But also not have to stand on the side of the road in a right of way and potentially be hit by a car. So thankfully, I want to just thank the people who worked on this especially to the grant writer who worked on this proposal to get this money into to Nashville, and also to the bus drivers who don't get their due pay. 
going to provide more jobs to more bus drivers and also to the union members who will build this site. Absolutely. So this is access, this is opportunity, and again, thank you to all who made the investment. And so now I will turn it back over to uh, Mr. C. Bland for our check presentation. I'd really like to just ask all of our folks up here, as well as our council members who are present, and other dignitaries, Jessica, so come on up and uh, stand behind Dr. Ch Taylor and the check. Thank you, thank you. 